The sum of human knowledge is advancing at an exponential rate and new discoveries are being published all the time. Estimates put the total number of academic papers at around 2 million per year, published in around 30,000 different journals, each with their own hypotheses, research and findings. 2023 is no exception, with big leaps in nuclear fusion, increased efficiency in the recycling of lithium-ion batteries, huge steps in artificial intelligence, and a whole lot more. In March of this year, scientists even mapped the entire brain of a fruit fly larva. Now, its brain is only the size of a grain of salt, but this is still Still pretty impressive. With countless clickbait videos and news articles, it can be hard to sift through these thousands of findings, and that's why today we're going to go over a few of the most interesting ones that you might have missed out on otherwise. In the United States, Alzheimer's disease is the fifth leading cause of death for people over the age of 65, with more than 130,000 Americans dying from it in 2020 alone, and currently 7 million people living with the disease. And of course, accounting for population differences, similar statistics are reported across much of the world. The earliest symptom of Alzheimer's generally affects memory, specifically the ability to remember newly learned information. This can be difficult to notice at first, because some cognitive decline is expected with an aging mind, but with Alzheimer's, the mental deterioration quickly surpasses as the norm. As the disease advances, it can lead to disorientation, confusion about time and space, personality changes, severe memory loss, and even physiological problems like difficulty speaking or walking. What's terrifying is that once this process begins, there's no stopping it. Alzheimer's is fatal, and there's currently no known cure. Part of the reason that we've struggled thus far to find a cure is because we aren't even sure exactly what causes Alzheimer's in the first place. After a patient with Alzheimer's has passed away, autopsies of their brain reveal two abnormal structures, plaques and tangles. Plaques are hard deposits consisting of beta amyloid protein fragments, which build up over time, impairing the regions of the brain where they reside. Similarly, tangles are twisting fibers of another protein called tau. But this is about as far as our knowledge has taken us. Scientists aren't certain why exactly these plaques and tangles form, how exactly they damage neural structures, and why some cells are far more susceptible to the damage than others. Over the last couple of decades, hundreds of different clinical trials using various treatments have attempted to slow or stop this process, but even the smallest scraps of success seem to elude researchers every single time. But 2023 was a big year for this field. On January the 6th, the US Food and Drug Administration granted approval for Lecamabab, a drug specifically designed to target the amyloid plaques. Pharmaceutical companies Isai and Biogen have been working for nearly two years on clinical trials for the treatment, and the 2023 approval means that it is one step closer to being widely available for all those who are battling the disease. Again, this is not a cure. Just before we continue with today's video, I want to give a quick shout out to our amazing sponsor today, and that's Foreo. Foreo have partnered with me to bring you a fantastic gift idea for your significant other or maybe just a gift for yourself. Foreo is a beauty tech company that offers many innovative professional like beauty devices for your home use. You might be thinking, it's a bit of a weird sponsor for you, Simon. Like, you're not a beauty channel. This is an education channel. What's going on? And uh, honestly, when they first uh, approached me for sponsorship, I agreed. And I said, well, send it to me. Let me check it out. I'll try it for a month. And if I like it, we'll promo it. And here we are. Ah, plus I gave one to my wife because it's a nice gift for women. <laughs> this is called The Bear and it features a facial workout. Its toning microcrown technology tightens the firms the skin, sculpts and contours the face, and even recharges the skin for a radiant complexion. I uh, never really gave much thought to my skin and all of this stuff, but I started using this and I had little wrinkles because I'm fast approaching middle age. And it was like, wow, it makes them less and it makes my skin nice. So uh, that's that's what's up. It's the only at-home microcurrent device with an anti-shock system. Smart sensors scan and measure your skin's resistance to electricity, adjusting the microcurrent intensity automatically for maximum safety and comfort. You won't have to worry about any shocks with this. So if you're looking for a great gift for your loved one or just for yourself, The Bear by Foreo Sweden is a no-brainer. With a superior microcurrent technology, T-sonic pulsations, and safety features like that anti-shock system, it's the ultimate facial fitness innovation. And you can get 21% off the bear by visiting the link below. You won't regret it. And now back to today's video. 
But the results of the clinical trials showed a slowed rate of cognitive decline of 27%, a truly significant amount, earning it the status of the first fully approved drug to combat Alzheimer's disease. But that's not the end of the story. In July 2023, pharmaceutical company Eli Lilly announced the results of their own weapon against Alzheimer's, Donamabab. Donamabab works in a similar way, targeting the amyloid plaques, but it seems to be even more effective. In one group, cognitive decline was slowed by nearly 50%, with patients being tested on their memory, problem-solving, personal care, and more. These two drugs, known as monoclonal antibodies, were so effective in some cases that they reduced the amyloid plaques to negligible levels, meaning that some patients still saw cognitive benefits six months to a year after they stopped taking the drugs. Of course, such powerful treatment doesn't come without side effects. Headaches, nausea, and other minor symptoms were common, but also were more serious ones like brain swelling and even brain bleeding. Again, it's far from a cure, but it's a massive step in the right direction. One of the most promising aspects of these new drugs is the potential for them to be used early on in intervention, when someone is developing amyloid plaques but has yet to show symptoms. If these drugs turn out to be worth all the hype, it's very possible that in the coming years, the world will have its very first survivor of Alzheimer's disease. It's long been known that cephalopods are among the most intelligent creatures on Earth. Cephalopods include cuttlefish, squid, and the star of today's episode, the octopus. Octopuses, or octopi, or whichever you prefer, continue to surprise researchers with their remarkable levels of intelligence and dexterity. They're able to solve complex mazes, unscrew lids to get food, and can even use tools such as the blanket octopus, which has been known to rip a stinging tentacle off a Portuguese man of war and brand it -ish as a weapon, since they themselves are immune to its effects. Part of the reason that they're so coordinated is the fact that they actually have nine brains, a small one in each arm and a central one which controls the whole body. Perhaps the craziest instance of octopus intelligence is the hilariously common occurrence of the slippery creature escaping its own enclosure in an aquarium, sneaking into another enclosure and snacking on some fish, and then returning to its own home before the employees arrive, a story which has reportedly occurred in several aquariums. But sometimes they don't even return to their enclosure, such as Inky, an octopus living in the National Aquarium of New Zealand who escaped his habitat in 2016, climbed down a 164-foot drain pipe and returned himself directly to the ocean. But a new study from 2023 suggests that their levels of intelligence may be even closer to ours than we previously thought, and that, as strange as it sounds, they may even experience nightmares. This study was published by researchers who interacted with Costello, a Brazilian reef octopus who had lived a pretty tough life before ending up in research. At some point off the coast of Florida, he had been attacked by another sea creature resulting in him losing the majority of two of his arms and suffering severe damage to a third. He survived the encounter with the predator, but it seems that the trauma from that day never left him. After being caught by accident by a fisherman and sold to the scientists, Costello got comfortable in his new enclosure in New York. He was smart enough to understand that he wasn't in any danger, made clear by the fact that he rested out in the open and didn't feel the need to hide when the researchers came around. But when one researcher, neuroscientist Eric Ramos, returned to the enclosure one morning, he found that the water in Costello's tank was dark and murky, as if the octopus had seen a predator and fired off its ink cartridges to conceal an escape. Obviously, no predator made it into the tank, so the puzzled researchers set up a camera to monitor the octopus 24-7, and what they found was truly remarkable. While sleeping, Costello would rest peacefully for a period of time before suddenly thrashing around, changing colors, and firing his ink, all behaviors you'd expect an octopus to exhibit when facing a hungry predator. Ramos said, it was really bizarre because it looked like he was in pain. It looked like he might have been suffering for a moment. And then he just got up like nothing happened and he resumed his day as normal. A while later, the team then combed through hundreds of hours of recorded footage and discovered that this had not been an isolated event. Three more times they watched Costello freak out before calming back down and going back to sleep. The researchers made the stunning proposition that Costello may be experiencing nightmares, perhaps trauma-induced flashbacks of his near-death experience out in the wild that claim two of his limbs. It's already been established that these creatures have sleep cycles, but the ability to dream and have nightmares is a big cognitive leap. If this is true, it holds huge implications for biology and evolution. It would potentially mean that nightmares are, for some reason, evolutionarily advantageous and thus independently evolved in multiple species. On the other hand, it may imply that nightmares are a natural byproduct of higher intelligence and that we may expect to see similar results in other clever animals such as dolphins, elephants, apes, and perhaps others. Unfortunately, Costello died from a parasite just a couple of months after these observations were made, so no further analysis on his potential dreams was performed. And 
some have suggested that his behaviors were a result of a deteriorating brain in the final stages before death. It's very difficult to verify any of this, since doing a proper brain scan on an octopus is no easy feat, so future studies are definitely necessary, but it's certainly intriguing. Perhaps it's bad news for vegans, but it's got great potential for agriculture. You see, new research in March of 2023 shows that plants may be screaming in agony when they go too long without water. Ah, okay, they might not be screaming in the way that we think of, but biologists at Tel Aviv University have found that plants emit distinctive ultrasonic clicks when under stress. It's well above the frequency that human ears can pick up, but if we could hear it, it would supposedly sound like the popping of bubble wrap at about the same volume level as a typical conversation. The stress that induces these sounds can come from a lack of water, but also from physical damage. One researcher noted, you cut the tomato and it screams. Previous work in this field has found that plants emitted ultrasonic vibrations when under stress, but it was not known if this vibration was powerful enough to carry through the air as sound. To see if this was a possibility, the team placed tomato and tobacco plants on tables in their lab with ultrasonic microphones nearby in case the plants made any noise. While the well-hydrated and undamaged plants made little to no sound, the thirsty plants were quite loud with tomatoes emitting an average of 35 ultrasonic clicks per hour, with the tobacco letting out a few less. When sliced in their stems, they also clicked many times an hour, though notably less than the thirsty plants. What's even stranger is that each plant species has its own unique voice. A machine learning algorithm quickly learned to tell the difference between tomato and tobacco clicks. It could even detect the plant clicking when they were placed in a noisy greenhouse surrounded by people talking and walking around. Soon after uncovering this mysterious phenomena, similar clicks were found to be emitted by corn, wheat, grapevines, and even a type of cactus. Now, it's important to note that we can't be certain that the plants are intentionally letting out these sounds as a distress signal. One researcher suggested that it may just be the forming and popping of bubbles in the plant's water-carrying tissue caused by changes in pressure due to the plant's stress. Regardless, the findings have potential for a lot of future research. Scientists are eager to find out if insects such as moths and flies can hear these sounds, or perhaps even some species of beetle who may use the vibrations from the clicking to know that a tasty bug is chewing on a nearby plant. The findings may also have big implications in agriculture. Imagine that in the future, farms could automate their crop watering based on plant feedback, minimizing wasted water by only spraying as much as is needed. Certainly fascinating, and we can expect more than a few surprises as the research into plant noises continues. So our last entry today is less of a discovery and more of a proposal. But if true, it has the potential to revolutionize everything we think we know about the universe. The age of the universe is a topic that has drawn the attention of scientists for many years. After all, it's crucial to understand what the universe was like in the past in order to accurately predict its future. In 1917, Einstein proposed a static universe, suggesting that everything we see is largely unchanging and it's uniform in every direction. According to this model, the universe essentially had no beginning, but rather is eternal in both directions of time. Einstein abandoned this idea upon Edward Hubble's discovery of redshifting galaxies and the subsequent models of an expanding universe, the model which has stuck around to this day. An expanding universe implies that all matter originated from a single point, which gave rise to the Big Bang Theory, and more recent analysis has showed that the universe is not just expanding, but that its expansion is accelerating, giving rise to the theory of dark energy as a source of this acceleration. Based on the observed rates of acceleration, redshift, and distance, the age of the observable universe was calculated to be about 13.7 billion years, with more recent advances in technology narrowing this down to 13.797. But a new study from the University of Ottawa challenges all of that. Professor of Physics Rajendra Gupta published a paper in July 2023 suggesting that the universe may be nearly twice as old as we currently believe, with his estimate at a shocking 26.7 billion years. Gupta arrived at this conclusion by combining the known model of an expanding universe with a theory known as Zwicky's tired light. Fritz Zwicky proposed nearly 100 years ago that light loses slight amounts of energy as it travels vast distances in space, increasing its wavelength and causing it to appear redshifted. Zwicky's 
retired light was meant as a complete alternative to the expanding universe, but instead of just choosing one theory or the other, Gupta incorporated both ideas, saying that it becomes possible to interpret the redshifting of galaxies as a hybrid phenomenon rather than due purely to expansion. If expansion isn't the only cause of redshift, it would mean that galaxies would need much more time to reach their current distances and wavelengths, leading to Gupta's estimate of 26.7 billion years. According to his paper, pushing back the age of the universe solves several problems in modern astrophysics, one of which is the discovery of celestial objects that don't seem to fit the current timeline. The Methuselah star, for example, is one of the oldest known stars with a 2013 NASA study finding that its age was 14.46 billion years, with a possible error margin of 800 million years. This seems to put the star's possible age as older than that of the universe itself. Similarly, the recently launched James Webb Space Telescope has revealed massive galaxies at incredible distances, with some appearing to have formed only 300 million years after the Big Bang. What's puzzling is that some of these galaxies appear to be just as well evolved as galaxies that formed billions of years later, including their sizes of black holes seemingly in conflict with the current theories of galactic formation. Gupta's extension of the universe's age resolves this issue entirely. Now, obviously, this is just a single model, and it doesn't yet have much support. However, it does remind us that science, especially astronomy, is not a done deal. Humanity still has a great deal to learn about the universe we live in, and we can't be afraid to change or even throw out some old ideas as our knowledge inevitably advances.